What I want to do in this video is explore how a floating exchange rate could, in theory, help resolve trade imbalances. And for this simplified example, we're going to assume that the exchange rate between the Chinese yuan and the US dollar is 6 yuan per 1 US dollar. And also for simplification, we're going to assume that China is only exporting one thing to the United States, and that one thing is microwaves. And at 6 yuan per dollar, the Chinese manufacturer is going to sell them in the United States for $50 each. And at that price, there's demand in the United States for 1 million microwaves. I'm also going to assume that the only export from the US to China is software. And they have demand for 2 million units if they sell them at 60 yuan per unit. So let's think about what the demand for each of the currencies will be from each of the manufacturers. So the Chinese manufacturer over here is going to sell a million units at $50 each. So he's going to get $50 million in revenue. And he is going to want to convert that $50 million into, into yuan. So you can kind of view this as the supply. This right over here is the supply of US dollars. And we're going to assume that these are the only people that are trading currencies, because these are the only people trading in this ultra simplified world. Now, the US manufacturer is going to sell 2 million units at 60 yuan each. So that's going to be 120 million, 120 million yuan of revenue. And he is going to want to convert this into dollars at the prevailing exchange rate right then, which is 6 yuan per dollar. So he is going to want to convert this. You divide this in by 6. He's going to want to convert that into $20 million. And obviously, he wants to convert into yuan because that's what his costs are in. That's where he lives. This guy wants to convert into dollars because that's where his costs are. Now, this is a supply of dollars. These dollars want to be converted into Chinese currency. This right here is the demand for dollars. This is the amount of dollars needed by a guy converting from yuan. Now, clearly, there's an imbalance. The supply of dollars is much larger than the demand for dollars in this situation. And any time the supply for anything is larger than the demand, if the supply, if the supply is larger than demand, then that means that the price the price must go down. When we talk about the price of a currency, in this case, the price of the dollar going down, we're talking about it in terms of yuan. So the dollar, the dollar will go down. The price goes down, which means the yuan goes up. The dollar will become weaker. The yuan will become stronger. Now, if that happens, what happens to the prices over here? If the yuan becomes stronger and we start seeing four, five yuan per dollar, or four yuan per dollar, or even three yuan per dollar, then this Chinese manufacturer won't be able to afford to sell it at only $50. He is going to have to raise the price in order to cover his cost in Chinese currencies. If he raises the price, he's going to lower the demand. On the other side of the equation, the American manufacturer, in order to get the same number of dollars, he actually can sell it for fewer yuan. Now he needs fewer yuan per each dollar. So he can actually lower the price in China. And if he lowers the price in China, that's going to increase the demand. So what you have happening is, because the yuan would become stronger if you had a floating exchange rate, the demand for Chinese goods would go down, and the demand for US goods would go up. And eventually, you would have this, this trade and currency imbalance resolve itself. Now, this is all theoretical, and the reality is that, that it's not that it's not allowed to float. And we'll describe that more in future videos. This is Salman Khan from the Khan Academy for CNBC.